Kevin is a charming guy who always helps his classmates financially. Everyone in his department likes him, but they do not know Kevin's dark side. He hails from a royal family in the village of Ohezi. Despite already being a graduate, Kevin bribed his way back to school for a specific reason. Kevin's father is gravely ill, and the elders demanded Kevin to bring 14 people, seven heads, would be used to bury the king, and the other seven to cleanse the throne before Kevin can become the king. Kevin returned to campus, made new friends, and won over lecturers with his money. During class, Kevin received a call from his village informing him it is time to bring the 14 people because his father's time was short. He persuaded a lecturer to organize a park excursion, which was approved quickly. Many students were thrilled since it was just a nearby park. And the excursion is free. Kevin convinced a churchgoer girl named Betty to join them. Kevin arranged for the bus driver to take a fast route with shopping stops along the way. The driver agreed, unaware of Kevin's interior motives. On the day of the excursion, 24 students, including Betty and Kevin, boarded the bus. They enjoyed the journey until the bus hit a road, trap set by villagers, with all tires damaged. The driver left to find help, but was captured by the villagers. The students waited on the isolated road for hours. As darkness fell, growing increasingly worried, Kevin felt consigned, but he knew exactly what he was doing. Attempts to call for help failed due to poor signal. Part of Kevin's carefully orchestrated plan, as night approached and the driver failed to return, panic set in. Villagers walking with Kevin made terrifying noise to scare the students into fleeing into the nearby woods, which they thought was just a forest. Betty frightened but steadfast invoked the name of Jesus. While the students ran into the woods, the villagers swiftly removed the bus and all belongings left behind. Erasing any trace of their presence. Lost in the terrific forest, the student cried and feared the unknown. Hours later, as the students slept, the villagers adopted two of them, a male and a female. When one student woke to find them missing, panic spread. Kevin secretly pleased with the progress. Joined the search knowing they needed 11 more victims. The students split into group to search, unwittingly making it easy for the villagers to target them. Despite their efforts, they could not find the missing students. Scream erupted from the other group. Another student had been attacked by a mysterious creature, leaving some injured. Kevin rushed to the scene, feeling consigned with another student missing, fear gripped the group as they realized the danger they were in. Kevin, filled with sinister delight, knew his plan was succeeding. In Kevin's village, the council of elders convened with the chief priests, who revealed that the king had only a few days to live. They needed to prepare the seven heads quickly for his burial rituals. The elders instructed some villagers to expedite the capture of the students, aiming to reach the required number within two days. Back in the forest, hunger and despair plugged the students. Who longed to return home, Kevin figged consigned alongside them, desperate for food. They ventured further into the woods and found some fruits, offering a glimmer of hope. Realizing they were walking in cycle, one student proposed finding a way out of the forest before it became their grave. Kevin agreed outwardly, but inwardly, 
dreaded the suggestion, knowing it could foil his plans. He urged his classmates to mark their paths as a guide, secretly intending for it to lead the villagers to them. As darkness fell, Kevin sought information about his father's health from his villagers. A courier classmate stumbled upon him, prompting Kevin to capture her with the villagers. Pretending to fend off a beast, Kevin lured his classmates to the scene, instilling fear and tension among them. David, one of the students, rallied his peers, urging them to aim themselves and stand against the dangers of the forest. Kevin's reaction betrayed his displeasure, but he masked it, feigning agreements with David's plans. Tension ticked as the students prepared to confront the unknown. Unaware of Kevin's sinister intentions locking Benite, his facade, as evening fell, the students constructed a makeshift hut, using their clothes to sleep. In the dead of night, the villagers launched another attack. Betty spotted shadows lurking around the hut and alerted her fellow students. Even Kevin joined in the defense. However, Kevin covertly signaled the villagers to retreat and return with more reinforcements. In the chaos, many villagers and students were injured. But the student managed to capture one villager. Kevin defied questioning. The captive out in mourning, insisting on tending to the wounded first. However, during the night, Kevin secretly released the villager, observed by Betty, pretending to sleep. Betty watched Kevin's actions unnoticed. By morning, the captive had vanished. Raising suspicions among the students, Kevin awaited accusations nervously, realizing someone might have seen him. As the students voiced their hunger and frustrations, Andrew suggested searching for a way out and involving the police. Kevin suspected Andrew might have seen him releasing the villager, but was not certain. The student dismantled the hut and searched for escape routes deeper into the forest, unknowingly playing into the villager's hands. Meanwhile, parents grew increasingly anxious as days pass without news from the excursion. The school authorities assured them of their efforts. While police investigations began, Betty mother troubled by a dream of impending danger to her daughter sought solace in prayer. As the student ventured deeper into the wood, guided by Kevin's machinations, news of the king's death spread through the village, casting a pall of sadness. Some villagers informed the guards, overseeing the kidnapped students, realizing they now lack the necessary seven sacrifice for the king's burial rites. When Stella reveals Kevin's betrayer to already captured students, Claiming he collaborated with the villagers, fear and disbelief gripped the students. Stellar testimony foiled their suspicion, leaving them with the chilling realization that they were pawned in a deadly game. The police launched their investigation and traced the students' last locations to where the bus stopped. Mobilizing quickly, they headed to the forests. While walking in the forests, Betty discovered network on her phone and called her mom to alert her. Other students without phones rushed to Betty to talk to their parents. When Kevin noticed Betty making calls, he grew furious and stormed towards her. He took her phone and broke it. The other students were surprised by Kevin's sudden aggressions. Many of them confronted him. But Kevin began shouting in a strange language, and his villagers emerged. Kevin explained that he only needed 14 students, but Becky actions endangered their lives. He declared an end to the game and ordered his villagers to attack the remaining students. 
Kevin singled at Becky and slapped her repeatedly. Accusing her of trying to alert the police, Betty's face began to bleed from the assault. Despite the student's attempt to fight back, they were helpless as they were tied up. As the student struggled against Kevin and his villagers, the police received a tracker update and rushed to the location. Betty's mom informed the school authorities about the call from Betty and their predicament in the forest. Concerned, they contacted the police commissioner. In the village, the students were dragged and added to the kidnapped ones. Back in Kevin's village, Kevin learned of the father's death and mourn. In the forest, the police found clue leading to the village. Thanks to Betty's blood, they arrived just in time to stop the ritualist sacrifice. As Kevy and his partners were arrested, the students were freed. They reunite with their parents, thankful for the rescue. The school authorities and police raise awareness about village practicing barbaric ritual, ensuring such incidents will not recur again. Thanks guys for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel to support us. Like, share and do not forget to drop your comment below. Please do not forget to tell us the country or the city you are watching from. Thank you guys. We love you all.